Coming up on Houston Life, allergy season has blown and have you sneezing, right? We have a procedure to clear you right up. Plus, Houston Fashion Week went virtual this year. Joe Sam takes a look at how the fashion industry is keeping you stylish. And KPRC 2's Vanessa Richardson joins us with a preview of her one-on-one -on -one exclusive with former Astros manager Jeff Luno. Hear what he has to say about the cheating scandal a year later. <laughs> From Studio B at KPRC Channel 2, Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this very rainy Monday, October 19th, 2020. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. We hope you had a great weekend. Yeah, the rain rolled through just now. At least we had one day of fall, right? I feel like the next day it was, it was a summer full day. I don't even again, think it was right? 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's right. Keeps us guessing. Keeps us guessing. Uh, how was your weekend? You know, mine was great. Um, basically, didn't leave the house yesterday. What happened? Yeah, well, I'm wearing my glasses, y'all. Derek's going to love this story. <laughs> he loves my contact lens stories. You had an eye injury or I something? I have an eye issue. Issue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I woke up yesterday morning and I said to Orlando, I think I'm having an issue here. I think I'm having a problem. And he basically said, well, why would you think that? I mean, my eye was just tearing. <laughs> it was red. It was very, like, uh, you know, sensitive to sunlight. But you were fine the night before. Totally fine. Everything was fine. I woke up with some eye pain. Not contagious, for those of you wondering. I have an eye ulcer. And it sounds just as painful as you might think. How do you get an eye ulcer? Wow. You worry a lot? I do. My eye, <laughs> my eye's all worried, anxious. I have an anxious eye. No, so, you know, I sleep with goggles because I have this dry eye issue. It's a condition. <laughs> she sleeps with her it's eyes open. It's a condition. Open. More people sleep with their eyes open. I mean, you don't walk in the room and see my eyes wide open, but open enough. So I have basically sort of like a callus on my eye, right? And I must have scratched it or somehow maybe itched my eye or something but that basically tore it open. Maybe the contact lens had something to do with it. I don't know. But thankfully, Dr. Tran, my lovely eye doctor, who's also my friend, went into the office and uh, looked at my eye yesterday and she said, because they don't open until Tuesday, and she said, if you would have waited until Tuesday, you would have been in a really bad way. Oh, wow. So I'm on a couple different medications for drops, but Got to wear the glasses for like 10 days, so. Okay. Well, you look very nice in glasses, <laughs> and I hope you heal up quickly. I feel like we have to acknowledge the fact that it all came to an end for the Astros over the weekend. Oh. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. And we were so excited. We went to this little sushi spot downtown right across from Market Square Park. Yeah. There's a spot called Sapporo Sushi. The I people are so nice. Do you, have you been there? It's so great. So yes. So we parked at the bar, and we, I, that was one of many, many martinis enjoyed that night. Uh, bummer game, huh? Bummer game. I mean, I just, you know, they fought so hard, and I would have loved to seen them in the World Series, of course, against the Dodgers, because who wouldn't? But, ugh. Yeah, maybe next year. Maybe next year. Heartbroken. And, and we love our team, regardless of whether they win or lose. Of Absolutely. Course. I just, I, now I hope we can keep them together. Oh, don't keep even put that players. out there. Let's quickly change the subject. Okay, All let's right. do it. Uh, why don't we check in with Mr. Joe Sam, who's also hanging out with us today in Studio B. Joe. How was your weekend? Well, this weekend was very stylish. Might I add, Courtney, you look good with those glasses on. Thank so you. It's the perfect time to do that because it was Houston Fashion Week wrapped up yesterday, you guys. And I had an amazing time chatting with the designer who was going to show us exactly what she did for Houston Fashion Week because they went virtual this year. And I'm going to show you all a little wrap up of what she did with my walk. She had to work on the walk. And yes, it was better <laughs> than that slow-mo walk that we did. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Nice. Very, very nice, Joe. Okay, so uh, that's great that you're going to give the, the runway walk. We, yeah. we can't wait to, to check that out. Very, very nice. stylish. <laughs> okay, cool. So also today we have Lauren Kelly doing something really cool, and Harry Potter fans are going to freak out because essentially it's like a, a pop-up, a temporary bar restaurant, right? I am so excited about this, and uh, Lauren Kelly is going to be live from the new Harry Potter-inspired pop-up, basically a family experience by day a bar for the adults at night, and one rule, no muggles allowed at all. Okay, Yeah. very nice. We're gonna check in with Lauren a little later on. And a reminder to get out and vote. I've got my little I Voted sticker on today. Early voting in Texas is happening right now. It goes until October 30th. And remember, folks, vote early. This is how we did it. 
We did the drive through. We did the drive through. We did the drive through, and there are a couple rules. If you're okay. if you're going to do the drive through, first of all, we went to Toyota Center. There was no line. We drove right in. If you if, if you just head down to Toyota Center, it's actually held in the parking structure next door to the arena. Okay. So look for the signs. It'll direct you right into the parking garage. You can't use your phone, right? So if you have a list of people you're voting for, make sure you print that out or write it out. Oh, good advice. Because your phones have to go away. No pictures or photos once you get inside. Also, if you're with someone else in the car, no talking. One person votes at a time, and you can't look at the person. They are very serious about these rules. Wow. Uh, lawyers are on hand in, in some locations just to ensure that people don't, you know, do anything weird. Um, so get out and vote early because you don't want to get stuck like I did again in this year's primary. Right. Waiting in line for six and a half hours. The other thing, if you're going to do the drive through voting, no political bumper stickers allowed on your car. Because it's the same as like electioneering, you know, on site. Yes. So if you have a political bumper sticker, either take it off or don't do. Put do those flags through. away. You can't put drive in with those either. Because yeah. There's a lot of car decals right now for for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And did you go uh, Saturday, yesterday? When did you go? We went on Saturday. Okay. And yeah. no line in and out? No line in and out. So Brandon voted first. It would have been faster had, had I gone alone because then I wouldn't have been waiting for Brandon to vote. And then, you know, once voting has commenced, again, you can't even... I was, like, staring out the window, not looking at him. So because you were together, though, did you have... You had to wait until he was done, or do you have to exit and come back? No, you wait until he's done, and then once he's done voting, then they, they come to your then side. Then they verified my ID, and then they handed it again through the same window. Okay. And then voting commences, and you vote, and it's the same voting machine that they have in the booth. Right. And honestly, I can't recommend it enough. It was kind of cool to do something new, but it was so convenient. The people down at Toyota Center were just so, so nice. And it, again, it's great to vote early. So if you guys have questions about locations or wait times, we do have an article posted on clicktohouston.com with everything you need to know. It felt good to vote early. Absolutely. And what I think is so great, too, I've, I've been looking at everybody's social media because they're posting about voting and the locations where people are going, whether it's the drive through location or a walk-in. And many people are saying, in and out, less than 10 minutes, wasn't a thing. So I love that the, the accessibility is there and you don't have to get out of your car either. Absolutely. And you know how I feel. I feel I like we should be making it easier for people to vote, not more difficult. And, exactly. Uh, you know, it's great to see so much turnout already um, um, yeah. in the state of Texas. It's great. It really is. And you know what? I Here's the thing. I love this next story. So do you like ramen? Are you kidding? Okay. So my boys are totally Robin, ramen kids. They love it. But they also like the bougie ramen, you know, where they go out and get, you know, the the... Yeah. broth that's been soaking or mm -hmm. brewing for 48 hours, something like that. Yeah. But listen to this. Speaking of voting, Top Ramen will soon be selecting a CNO. CNO. <laughs> what? Chief Noodle Officer. No way. I'm the CNO. <laughs> One of the requirements, you must have a passion for noodles. Well, that's me. I know. Listen to this. To enter, post an original recipe using ramen on social media. The winner is going to get paid $10,000 to help develop what? and test new recipes. I mean, this is mind-blowing to me because this should have been done years ago. Genius. Right? Think about all the ramen you have eaten in your life. I do love ramen. Good ramen. I feel like there is sort of a stigma attached to ramen that you buy in the store, though, almost like it's... I don't know, a college meal. Sometimes I do feel a little embarrassed. No, but here's the thing. I bet you're going to find some major foodies putting together some really incredible dishes, whether it's like with different vegetables or maybe you're adding chicken or sauteed mushrooms or something. Like, I feel like there's some really good recipes coming. That will come out of this. Yes. I like just the regular flavor packet. You know, my friend in high school, Holly, guess what she would add to her ramen? <laughs> I don't even know. Can I get a category of where to guess from? In the condiment section. Ew. What? <laughs> Just guess. Mayo? Ketchup. Ew. <laughs> I know. Why? I don't know. I need to call her and ask if she's still doing that all these years later. I get the hot sauce. You know, people want to add the... Yeah, like a sriracha or something. Yes. But ketchup I get that. sounds just nasty. You know how I feel about ketchup, first of all. <laughs> Can't do it. I love ketchup. I mean, I'll, I'll it. use it in eggs or whatever. I like it, but not in my ramen. Sorry, Holly. I love you, but yeah. that's atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> that's foul. Don't let her see it. 
Oh my gosh. Name that movie. I don't know. Devil Wears Prada. Oh, where I she throws just... her bag. That's foul. And she's walking into Miranda Priestly's office. Oh, okay. Anyway, okay. Speaking of personal things. Yes. Because that's what we were speaking of, right? Ketchup and ramen. I have a personal question for you. But there's a reason behind it. There was a study done. You know, we always oh, find we love these a good great study. studies. Uh, what time of day? Like, when do you shower during the day? Oh well, I uh, well I take a shower in the morning, and okay. then um, and then at night, I shower both times. Okay, I think that's good. Yeah, I take very short showers, probably like three minutes, and I do morning and night. Okay. Okay. So actually, every once in a while, I won't shower before bed. But that yeah. is kind of nasty when you think about it. Yeah, I shower before bed. Yeah, yeah. It's, especially in Houston. And I always have the intention of taking a short shower, and then I, you know, I end up like conditioning my hair, or do, I mean, it. I don't know. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I like it short and sweet. I've never been a long shower guy. You know, he's very little water. Anyway, according to Sleep Medicine reviews, showering at night is the okay. way to go. It's said to help you fall asleep faster. Okay. And also relaxing. I relaxes guess. Relaxes you, calms you down, right? It also eliminates the allergens that you've been collecting all day. All day. And because you lay down on the pillow, right? Well, yeah. Imagine you put hair product in, and then everything floating through the air is like sticking to it. So then if you don't wash it out, you are then depositing that yes. all out onto the pillow. And it, apparently it's better for your skin because all your makeup and the oil and the dirt and everything that you collect during yeah. the day is gone. Well, yes, absolutely. So, I mean, So there you definitely. go. You heard it here first. I still prefer the morning and evening. I can't imagine going to work without showering. I, I can't either. I know some of our coworkers do that, but... I can't either. I don't know. Yeah, I'll just I don't. Leave it at that. Hey, let's get to our viewer question of the day. Let's what do time it. of day do you typically shower? Again, I know we're getting very personal here, but we feel like we're all family, so we can discuss these things, right? We can. Okay. All right, still ahead. Allergies may have you feeling a bit out of sorts lately. See what you can do to get some relief. Yeah, plus, the runway is going virtual this year. See how you can get a front row seat next. supporting local businesses in Houston. We love your smiles every day. See you soon. Hey, y'all. I'm Sylvia from Friendswood, Texas, and I love watching Houston life. Let it flow over me and I can feel it. Oh, look at all of those amazing shout-outs. Thank you guys for sending those in and continue to send them in. We love seeing those shout-outs. And you know what else we love seeing? Some stylish fashion. And that's what we're going to be looking at right now because the catwalk looked a little different this year for Houston Fashion Week with many designers producing their own virtual show. Now, I caught up with one designer at her shop as she wrapped up another year of creative fashion. Miss Haley, thanks so much for inviting me here to this beautiful shop. There are so many great designs here, and you participating in Houston Fashion Week, that had to be quite a task. Let's talk about how it felt being a part of Houston Fashion Week. Well, it's just a lot of uh, excitement, mm -hmm. uh, working with the models and uh, fitting them in the clothes and, and doing their runway, and it's just really exhilarating. You know? What got you into doing it? Becoming a designer and getting into fashion, it's a tough business, but you have been thriving and you have this beautiful shop here as proof of you thriving as a designer. What inspired you to become one? Well, as a teenager, I used to shop at uh, department stores and everything had hanger appeal, but nothing fit and I got tired and went home. So <laughs> I was determined when I grew up that I wanted to create clothes that actually draped on the body, that fit perfectly, that people would try on and be happy with. And people were happy with the fact that the show was virtual and featured Houston designers like Lola's Garcia, Mary Santabanez, Rosie Gomez, and of course, Haley Holloquin. I started off uh, as an artist and I used to paint, and I used to paint on silk. And then I started designing, being inspired by the fabric and are designing on 
designing garments to paint on. Mm. That's how I first started. She then started teaching models how to walk to add to her fashion expertise and even showed me a few tricks on the runway. I do train the models to walk. Uh, I do project, uh, fashion show productions. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually, you know, recruit some of the models and I um, train them at a very young age and some of them have been very successful. Oh, wow. And we've seen that success here with Houston Fashion Week. How long have you been a part of Houston Fashion Week and what does that do to you being able to see your designs come down that runway and you're just sitting there just like wow I did that. I've been part of Houston Fashion Week since 2012 and I get really uh, I put a lot of work into this so it's really satisfying to watch the runway once it happens. This year's Fashion Week celebrates 12 years of spotlighting talented Houston designers and models and is recognized as one of the top 10 fashion events in America, leaving a fashionable trail for others to follow. That young boy, that young girl that wants to be inspired by what you do and that it's motivated about fashion and fashion design, what would you tell them as a designer to inspire them? Believe in yourself and believe in your dream and remember it's hard work. And that's exactly what they did there for Houston Fashion Week with it going virtual. Now, this year's proceeds from Houston Fashion Week will support the Siberian Husky Camp of America. And if you've missed this year's incredible fashion, I'll have a link posted on our website to see how you can check it out virtually. A lot of great things happening there. And I absolutely love showing that walk off. I had to get it on in. <laughs> you did a good job. <laughs> you did. I had to try it out because I said, you know what? My walk is a little clumsy, so I usually always fall down if I do any type of <laughs> no. fashion walking. But this one, I stayed on my feet. I think next year they should bring you in as an official yeah. model for the show. I even have the couture like pose down. There, there we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice Joe, show. thanks. Absolutely. Well, coming up a little bit later in the show, a preview of KPRC 2's exclusive one-on-one -on -one with former Astros manager Jeff Luno. But first, the dreaded sinus season is upon us. Find out how you can get lasting relief and finally breathe easy. That's after the break. Welcome back. Did you know 20 million adults are diagnosed with sinusitis every year? And for many Houstonians, Courtney, the fall season is also known as sinus season. Oh, for sure. Dr. Michael Kaplan with Kaplan Sinus Center is breaking down five telltale signs that you have a sinus infection instead of a cold. It's great to see you. Good to see you guys. You know, let's talk about this because I think one of the symptoms that people live with, it could be maybe, you know, 20 years. Be like, oh, I have a headache and head pain. It's just, sure. it's just a cold. Absolutely. You know, in this time of year, allergy symptoms can mimic a cold and people don't know. Do I have an allergy? Do I have an infection? When do I need to come in to see the doctor? You're right. And Absolutely. is it true, doctor, that if you get a headache that sort of occurs not just in your in your head, like your forehead, you can also feel it in your upper jaw, the teeth, in between your eyes, the neck. I mean, where you're experiencing that pain, isn't that sort of a, a key thing to look for? Sure. You know, headaches uh, behind your eyes, uh, on top of your forehead, behind your cheeks especially, those are ind indicators of a true sinus infection. The allergies are going to give you... You know, generalized stuffiness, itchy eyes, itchy nose, but the pressure, the discolored changes in your mucus, uh, those, those issues, those things are more indicative of an infection. And let's be honest, I mean, you know, we know the longevity of a cold, Dr. Kaplan, and having a sinus infection not treated can really prolong and be very painful. Sure, I mean, if, if, if you're having symptoms uh, for more than a few weeks, certainly more than a couple of months, you're most likely experiencing some type of an infection. Uh, if it's, you know, three to five days, it's probably just a cold or allergies. That's accurate. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I know uh, we're past lunchtime now, and this is yeah. kind of gross to say, but the reality is a lot of people experience some sort of nasal drainage. What should sure. they be looking for coming out of their nose? If it's yellow or green, it's not normal. That's basically the bottom line there. If you're blowing out yellowish, greenish mucus, uh, congestion, headaches, pressure, that's a reason to call your doctor. And there's also um, fatigue can be associated with this. Is that just because of the amount of pressure that's going on? 
your body's fighting an infection. The immune system is stressed. So at any time the immune system is working over uh, an override, you're going to feel tired, you're not sleeping as well, feel fatigued. Absolutely. And we're seeing so, some of these symptoms pop up on the screen there for a moment, but cough, fever, sore throat, these are things that people can experience temporarily if they do have a cold, but the key here is if these symptoms are, are lasting for a long time. Sure, it's the constellation of these symptoms in conjunction with the time frame lasting six, eight weeks, uh, three months. 100%. That's more indicative of an infection and a Kaplan sinus relief. Those are the issues that I can resolve in my office without you having to go to a hospital type setting. And this is major relief for so many people. And, and we've talked about this before, uh, Dr. Kaplan, is somebody says, oh, it's allergies and I've been dealing with this for 20 years. I mean, the bottom line is we don't need to le live like this and with this and suffer this long because the procedure is very easy takes 20 minutes in the office on the vast majority of patients and within a week or so your quality of life is beginning to improve dramatically it's it's that consistently good and that procedure yeah. dr kaplan is the balloon sinuplasty you, you already right. mentioned 20 minutes right minimally invasive so when people come in let's say they schedule an appointment i know you're really busy these days because october mm -hmm. is crazy for allergies in houston yeah. uh describe the process and and when they can expect to just sort of resume normal activities like going back to work well the sinuses is like an like an hourglass and that narrow canal in in, in, a, in a true sinus infection that narrow canal is blocked and what I can do is open it up and establish much better drainage. It takes 20 minutes. You either have to sleep or completely sleep, depending on what you want. I can give you some medications by mouth. I can get you nice and relaxed and asleep with an IV. But in any event, within 20 minutes, we're done. You're walking out, and within a week, you're breathing and feeling better. Within two weeks, consistently better than you've been breathing in, and most oftentimes in years. And we've heard from so many of your patients in the past about how well they're sleeping, how well their spouses are, are now sleeping since yeah. that procedure has been done. Let's talk about sort of the consultation and um, a lot of these uh, are covered by Medicare and mo most medical health plans, is that right? Yes, Medicare covers it and the vast majority of, uh, of, of, insur of commercial insurance carriers cover it completely. And yes. we should point out too, unfortunately it's not covered by Medicaid or community health care. Um, and also yeah. we got to talk about how you guys have been handling COVID because the CDC has very specific guidelines for someone out there who might be concerned about scheduling an appointment. Uh, walk us through what you guys have done to, to protect your clients. Sure. Well, we're all wearing masks. I've got mine, obviously not right now. All my staff is wearing masks. We've got air purifiers in the room. Uh, we're doing temperature screenings, temperature checks, and we're cleaning the rooms after each patient, whether they're a surgical patient or just an office patient. We're taking every conceivable step to make it as safe as it is in most hospital environments. All right, Dr. Kaplan, we'll leave it there today. Thanks for helping us breathe a little easier. Bet. Have a good day. You too. And if you would like to schedule an appointment with Dr. Kaplan at Kaplan Sinus Relief, you can call 713-766-0204 or visit them online at kaplansinusrelief.com. And stay right there. After the break, Keith and Christine will join us with a look at what's ahead on the news at 4. And Justin has a look at how this rain could affect your evening commute. Don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be back in just two minutes. All right, 3.30, welcome back. Yeah, so glad to have you with us I know. today. And uh, at the top of the show, we asked our question of the day. It was very personal, but very. forgive us. Uh, it's an important topic. We're asking, what time of day do you typically shower? And Andrea writes in, usually at night, but I have an infant, so showering sometimes is not an option. Am I right, moms out there? Yes. Yeah, I mean, You're, it's sort it's of so like true. napping. You have to just fit it in when you can. And next comes in Karen, night. I have to wash the day off before bed and sleep good. Oh, okay. There you go. And Danny writes in, morning and before bed. Okay, sometimes in the middle of the day if the humidity is up. Yeah. Which is always so three times a day. You know what? I, I have a feeling they're not alone. I know. All right, so now we've got those questions out of the way, right? We're getting personal. We have another one. Uh, Greta said right before bed, it helps with my insomnia and I can't sleep unless I'm freshly showered. Okay. Perfect. Well, we feel you, Greta. 
Very nice. Why don't we toss it on over to Justin? We heard a few claps of thunder outside Channel 2 Studios. Like the rain came down, Justin, and <laughs> man, it hit us hard. You know, it's funny because I'm just writing the update for our website at uh, clicktohouston.com, and I said isolated but hefty little downpours that have been moving on through. Here's the problem, guys. Look at this. We've got this cold front here. It's just stuck. Look at that. 62 in Dallas, 90 in Austin, and unfortunately, it's going to slowly lift back up as a warm front, so that's going to keep us on kind of the unsettled side obviously the murky side is what we've been seeing and those temperatures are all affected by that uh, southeast wind now let's talk about where the front is notice it's still kind of stretching its way from st louis down to memphis but as we jump a little tighter this is what you guys were just talking about see some of these downpours one near lake livingston there we've had a couple kind of ride their way up the north freeway and the decent amount of lightning with that too up into north harris county another one out towards eagle lake so they're out there not everybody's going to see them but if you do as you mentioned you are going to watch out because this has been dropping about a half an inch to close to three quarters fairly quickly about 30 minutes so just kind of keep a heads up if you got to go pick the kids up here in the next 30 minutes or so or if you're going to go out to practice we'll see the same thing as we head into uh, this afternoon to this evening so here's a look at your 10-day forecast we're going to talk more about this coming up here in the next uh, about, mm, 35 minutes or so 86 and then notice that we keep things fairly unsettled but watch this front right here this one on Tuesday look at this we go from the 80s to the 60s to the 50s oh my and then back into the 70s so it's way out there that's kind of voodoo land guys you know christine and keith but <laughs> But either way, we're going to do our best to see if we can't uh, at least provide a little more fall weather before we finally get into, I don't know, November. Yeah, well, I can't, nice can't believe that's already uh, in the forecast. Uh, getting close there, it's man. It's a good balance, though, because Keith likes the heat. Yes. I like the fall, yeah. so deliver a little bit exactly. for everybody. Justin. That's right. Thank yes, you. I thought you needed help with your forecast, Justin. You don't need any help. You got it down. <laughs> got it down. <laughs> I got you, brother. I got there you. we right. go. There we go. All right, <laughs> so also coming up at 4 o'clock today, it's back to the classroom for some HISD students. Yeah, this was the first day students who chose in-person learning could return to HISD campuses. Channel 2's Brandon Walker is covering this story and is taking a look at the safety precautions being put into place to minimize the risk of spreading COVID-19. And a lot of couples forced to change or even postpone their weddings during this pandemic. But one couple still managed to have their dream wedding despite the bumps in the road. Now they are sharing tips on how other couples can do the same. Yeah, plus a TikTok challenge feeling concerns about children overdosing on Benadryl. The warning signs that parents need to look out for. That's all coming up today at 4 o'clock, you guys. Certainly hope you had a great weekend. Absolutely. You know, I know, Christine, you like a good Taco Bell drive through I'm wondering if Keith does. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. We've got a really cool story after the break. Taco Bell, you know, said goodbye to their pizza. A we do have a news. local restaurant that is helping you get your taco pizza fix. So many people are asking, Mexican why pizza. would they do that? I know. I think there's an online petition to try to bring it back as well. Plus, Lauren Kelly is heading to Hogwarts today with a look inside a brand new pop-up bar and restaurant for you magical fans out there. More Houston Life right after this. Welcome back to Houston Life. Hey there, Courtney. Did you know it is time for another round of Houston Life Bingo coming up oh, this week? Oh, 65. <laughs> oh, 65. I do my Cher best share impression. She makes an, an appearance each time. And if you haven't played bingo, then you're missing out. So you should register. That's right. The theme is Halloween, of course. Sign up now on our website. We're playing on Wednesday evening. Can't wait to see you there. Yeah, and it's free to register. And the winners of each round will go home with a little prize pack. A little swag. All some merch stuff you <laughs> for your next garage sale uh, <laughs> you can't no, sell the swag no, it's some pretty good stuff <laughs> it's some good stuff all right so shifting gears now courtney you know i love a good taco bell run I know this about you. During COVID, I must admit, <laughs> we've been going a little more frequently than, than normal. But my go-to is just the basic bean burrito. It's oh, worse. I know. I love it. Well, it was the Mexican pizza until someone thought it was a really good idea <laughs> to remove it from the menu. Why did they do that? I don't know. You know, I recently went to a Taco Bell. This one's on Shepherd, kind of River Oaks area. It's already sold out. That's the sign I saw on the drive through Awful. Even though it's still available at some locations until I think it's November 5th. I was sad disappointed many emotions here that this announcement was made but luckily I'm not alone in missing this drive-through staple I know it seems really weird to have some Taco Bell bags in my hand while I'm walking into real restaurants but trust me chef Ryan he's gonna love this stuff let's go inside 
Riel opened its doors in 2017, and since then, Chef Ryan Lachane has been creating delicious food, from truffle and caviar pierogi to soft-shell crab and mushroom empanadas. Riel has been a crowd favorite. This Canadian-born chef knows good food, and he also loves fast food. Chef Ryan, I brought you some goods, some Taco Bell, straight from the drive-thru. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> okay, you are officially a junk food junkie. I love fast food. How is that possible as a chef? Lots of times we get off work late and it's the only thing open. Maybe that shouldn't be an excuse. I just, I've, I've always eaten fast food and I, I love it. Okay, so your true reaction when you heard Taco Bell announced no more Mexican pizza. I wasn't happy. I felt betrayed. <laughs> After years After of eating. Years, years of eating it, yeah. Okay, sure. so then you set your plan into action. Mm -hmm. And what did you do? So we put together our own kind of Mexican pizza here, but just kind of put the real spin on it. Okay, all right, so what do we have here? So what we have, we're gonna put to make the um, the real uh, Mexican pizza, or we call it uh, pizza de gallo here. Okay. So we're gonna start with house-made refried beans. Lovely. So we're gonna put some beans down here. Now we have some uh, some seasoned ground beef, which we season with a little bit of um, onion powder, some garlic powder, some cayenne, and some paprika. Next, we're gonna just Put our other tortilla on top there. And we that's have, really the true, you that's, know, that's a, Taco Bell style. That's the true Mexican pizza right there. We're gonna top this with a with a, a lot of cheese, because I like them cheesy. And then we're gonna stick this in the oven for two to three minutes and let that cheese melt. Cheese is melted out of the oven. So next we are gonna put on some uh shreddus. Some what now? Shreddus, which is shredded lettuce. Okay. I think this is a, like I said, a proper culinary term now. So we're gonna put <laughs> our uh, our shreddus on there. And next we're gonna put on our pico de gallo, which is just some um, cherry tomatoes, um, onions, jalapenos, and some lime juice, a little bit of salt. Next, we have um, sour cream. Okay. I always ask for extra sour cream. And then we're gonna finish off with just some micro cilantro, because I'm fancy. And that's it. Okay, that looks amazing. Okay, I'm ready to dive in. Let's do it. And again, this is only available off menu, but on the happy hour menu only. Happy hour, 5 to 6.30 every day. Okay, 5 to 6.30. And you're not going to be like Taco Bell and remove this from the menu, are you? Absolutely not. Okay, I'm diving in. But look, you've got the real deal over there, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. I'm coming every day. I'll be here. I mean, do we have the tissues? Because this is just, it's too much. I love Chef Ryan over at Real. I mean, he took matters into his own hands yeah. and recreated that, the pizza de gallo. What's the verdict? I mean, it looks honestly better. It looks better than the Taco Bell version. It is. It is. It is so good. And uh, happy hour off menu, but get there for the happy hour and check it out. Pizza de Gallo, of course, is available right now. And he said it's going to remain on the menu. You will not see a sold out sign. It's uh, not going to be discontinued. We're going to hold him to that. I'm going to see you there every single day at 5 o'clock. See you there. Just like you said. <laughs> see you there today and tomorrow. And tomorrow and the and next, next day. <laughs> and the next one. All right, still ahead on Houston Live, Lauren Kelly is experiencing the magic at the brand new Harry Potter pop-up bar and restaurant downtown, Courtney. And KPRC 2's sports reporter, Vanessa Richardson, she's going to join us with a preview of her one-on-one -on -one exclusive with former Astros general manager, Jeff Luno. What he is saying, one year after the cheating controversy. We'll be right back. You know, the Astros cheating scandal has been a national story, international story, truly all of 2020. But tonight, you're going to hear some inside details from former Astros GM Jeff Luno. Joining us now is KPR2 sports reporter Vanessa Richardson with a look ahead at this exclusive interview. Vanessa, it's great to see you. By the way, what a great get. Uh, what can we expect from this? Yeah, thanks, Courtney. I love that you guys are having me on. I love Houston life. And, you know, this was such an intimate 37-minute interview, so you can expect him to really dive into details we haven't heard from Luno since he was fired. He talked about the cheating scandal, when he found out, who was in on it, when it started, when it stopped. He also talked about conversations he had 
with Rob Manfred, the MLB commissioner. He talked about some of the other incidents that happened while he was GM. So uh, it was really revealing in a lot of different ways. You know, so many of us, for, for us, our sports fans, Astros fans, this wound is still fresh. It's still open. Uh, we're off of a, of, a, of a hurtful loss. And I want to know your biggest takeaway right now. Um, do you believe him? That's a really good question, and I've been asked that by a couple different radio hosts today. I have said from the beginning that my job as a reporter um, is to tell the story and is to share his side of the story, but I also asked him some harder questions, some questions that a lot of people would consider uncomfortable, and I do give kudos to him and his family. He, they said that no question was off the table. So we really did a deep dive, um, but I, I won't say whether or not I believe him because I do want to be unbiased and professional, mm -hmm. but I think that our viewers, I think Astros fans and baseball fans, fans, whether they believe him or not, will find this interesting. Well, let's talk about maybe some of the questions, and I think it's very interesting um, that really nothing was off the table. Mm -hmm. um, what's something that you really wanted to ask him? Clearly, we want to sit down and watch this entire 37-minute interview later tonight, but what's one thing that stood out to you? So I think the question I had, and it's really hard to prove that you didn't know something, but from the get-go, Jeff Luno has said that he didn't know about cheating, that it was people in the video room, that it was, you know, players. And so I asked him, what evidence do you have? And he and his lawyer have come up with so many documents. They've uncovered a lot of documents. And you're going to want to watch the special tonight at 630 because he really dives into that. I was surprised at how hard he fought for his case. Um, and then we also asked him some other things. Are you still friends with ex-manager A.J. Hinch? What are your career plans? Are you going to work in baseball again? So he, again, it's a lot of detail. It was a very nuanced interview, and I know that people are going to watch the special. Of course, they'll want to watch it online, too. Absolutely, and I think it's really interesting when you when you have paperwork, mm -hmm. right, as journalists to, to yeah. back up uh, some of the information that you're presenting. So that is very interesting, uh, too. Um, Vanessa, I've got to ask you this, okay? Mm -hmm. How did you get the interview? You can't, you don't have to give us away the secrets and all of that, but um, how did it happen? Yeah, so I was able to meet Jeff and his wife, his brother, really his entire extended family last year at the ALCS, and I'm um, just kind of acquaintances with them. And when it got time for him to share his story, he wanted somebody that he could trust. And luckily enough, you know, he trusted me and chose KPRC to tell it the right way. And I think we're doing it the right way. Um, our bosses were nice enough to make this special, mm -hmm. and Jeff was nice enough to trust us. So again, regardless of where you stand on this, regardless of whether you hate the Astros, you hate Jeff Luno, everybody is going to want to hear what he has to say because he hasn't spoken out since he was fired. Absolutely. Well, Vanessa Richardson, we're excited to see it. Congratulations on a great get. I know you worked hard to get that interview and also tell this side of the story as well. We'll all be watching. Thanks again. Thank you. And you all don't want to miss the Luno interview. You're going to see it only right here on KPRC. Our half hour special again starts at 630 tonight. The full 37 minute interview will be posted to click to Houston.com so you can see it there as well. But it's definitely going to be interesting. Orlando and I Derek, we're talking about this. You know where we're going to be at 630. Yeah, absolutely. Can't miss that. All right. Thanks so much. Shifting gears now to Houston's brand new Harry Potter themed pop-up bar and restaurant. It's now open in downtown, offering guests a safe and magical experience for the entire family. Yeah, you guys, it's the muggle pop-up bar in downtown Houston. We're at 7-Eleven Main, and they have completely transformed this two-story wonderland for all of you Harry Potter fans out there. I know there are so many in Houston, and I guess my Harry Potter gear was a little bit dirty this morning, so I'll have plenty of time to go and wash it while this pop-up is in town through November the 8th. I've got a lot on this place, but I want to take you right to the first floor of this two-story wonderland right now. When you walk in, there's plenty of seating, lots of seating. They've got tons of specialty items on their food menu. They're going to make some very delicious, potent drinks for the adults later on in the evening. And it's not just something for the kids and adults because they have an entire day planned out where, you know, the adult stuff turns in at 8.30 p.m. The kids kind of go home. There's fun and games before that. But there's so many Easter eggs from the movie that when you walk in, you're going to be so excited to be here. It's just awesome. Awesome. There's plenty of different photo ops. And look, I'm going to walk down to that Forbidden Forest because I think that they have something waiting for me. I only know one Harry Potter spell, and that is Expecto Patronum. Um, and that, look at that. 
Ta-da, I've got my very own butter beer waiting for me. I'm gonna show you guys tons more of the drinks they have upstairs and lots more fun with the photo ops at this muggleless Harry Potter pop-up bar in downtown Houston coming up after the break. Don't move. passion for something, if you're in charge of making an entire pop-up bar around that whole theme, that's why I'm so excited to talk to Asha right here. We're downtown in Houston at the brand new Muggleless Harry Potter pop-up bar and restaurant. Thanks for giving us the preview today. <laughs> you're so welcome. I'm so excited to have you guys here. So first of all, let's tell a little bit about the backstory. You were a big Potter fan from the beginning. Oh, yes. I literally have been reading Harry Potter books since I was literally about 10 or 11 years old. I carried the book like a little nerd and you know <laughs> why not even recreate something as an adult that I loved as a childhood um, in my childhood absolutely yeah. so 7-eleven Maine is the address yes. and it's not just for adults it's not just a bar setting it's also for kids for sure talk about the kids activities so we have various activities for kids so we do have um, tie making for your house so oh, your Ravenclaw yes. okay your Hufflepuff we definitely have some felt ties for you guys to make if you want to get that scar, um, scar from Voldemort we right. definitely have tattoos for you guys as well and we do have painting activities with invisible ink. Oh, that's yes. fun. So as we're walking around, we showed you guys earlier downstairs mm -hmm. food and things like that mm -hmm. are downstairs, but upstairs is a completely different setting. Yeah. There's so many photo ops. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're standing in front of the Hogwarts, the Hogwarts Express. Express. And look, if you turn around, you can push right here and you can take your photo. And it's like that all over the place. So if you want to come over here and show viewers right over here really quickly, just a few of these different photo ops, Diagon Alley, and then over here with the big chess pieces. Yes. So this like, is, this is a putting me in the movie. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, so this is a chess piece from the first book from the Chamber of Secrets, and that's where Ron and Harry had to fight in order to win everything. So yes, this is definitely one of my favorite parts from the movie. Okay, wall to ceiling, magical decor. For Let's sure. Let's walk on over here and awesome. see a few more of the options. Like, for the entire family to come, yes. it's all about the Instagram photos. It's photo, all about right? the photos. So when you walk into this, you're like, oh. Oh, I recognize this scene. Yes, so this is the scene from the Dursley's house. Remember when Harry's getting ready to get that acceptance letter and all of it popped through the um, fireplace? Yep. So this is where we have it at. All right, yes. so here's also, Asha, very important. After 8.30 p.m., yes. kids got to go. Kids got to go. Adults can come this Adults way. Adults only. More of the photo opportunities yes. with the houses. Yes. But the bar. Yes. The drinks are where yes. it's at. So Look. this is our Honey Dukes bar. So this is where we have all of our adult beverages for everyone to have. And oh, this I'm going to stop you. Did you see how much she poured in there? That was like a drink for me. Yes, Hello? it certainly was. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about the, is there fun names that go along with this? Yes, these? so this drink right here is our poly juice potion. It is absolutely amazing. So also this one right here is for our Slytherin people. This is the Slytherin. The blue one is our, for the Ravenclaw people, the Raven Slosh. And for our Gryffindor crew, we got the Gryffin drunk. And for and Hufflepuff <laughs> crew, we have the Hufflebuzz. And of course, you know, what you had earlier, we do have butterbeer available in alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. And you guys are doing two-hour increments for times and tickets, which if you want want the tickets, go ahead and jump online. HoustonLife.tv is where they can get all the information. One more. Can, can I take a sip of you this? You can take a sip. This is like the biggest glass I've ever <laughs> Do I just pick it up? Just pick it up. Oh, oh my gosh. All right. Here we go. Cheers, Pop. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> 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 the muggle is bar in downtown for all the Harry Potter fans that are in Houston. Cheers, guys. We'll see you out here. Derek and Courtney, back to you guys. I think there's a mistake. I ordered the large martini. Yeah, that's a little too small right there. <laughs> How does it taste, Lauren? Yeah, what's it taste like? It's fantastic. Good thing I'm not driving back home, so cheers. <laughs> wow, that is very, very nice. I'm assuming that it would it would be a really fun night to actually dress up I know. and go. You gotta dress up, right? Well, I love that they give two options. Absolutely. Daytime for family, nighttime turns into a bar. I think it's fantastic. All right, Lauren. Yes. You've got They've your got work cut out for you. Too. Good luck with that cocktail. Cheers. Have fun. <laughs> All right, before we head out, let's check back in one more time with what you had to say about our question of the day. We are wondering and asking, what time of day do you typically shower? Okay, well, Cunique writes in, since moving to Houston four years ago, it depends. However, the number of showers is always two. 
all year round. Yes, very I'm with true, you. Cunique. Okay, and Carrie writes in, no shame since um, COVID. I've been working from home and homeschooling the kids. I might shower four times a week nowadays. Oh wow. <laughs> okay, well that's you're you're not alone there, Carrie. And Adriana writes, nighttime. If you always go to bed clean, your sheets will stay clean longer. That's a nice little tip. Absolutely. Okay, guys, coming up tomorrow in Houston Life, listen to this, whiskey and food pairings, what to serve with your dr next drink. Ooh, this is good. really fun. And fresh off premiere night, we're going to check in with a local contestant on NBC's The Voice. Very much looking forward to that as well. Hard to believe a new season is already underway. And, of course, as always here in Houston, Courtney, we have so much local talent. It's great to see them on a national stage absolutely in the you know our friend Sarah Grace Sean sounds I mean like we have seen so many people grace the stage of AGT especially from Houston and so I love that there's always a Houston contender yeah there's always a Houston contender and always a Houston connection in life as I know you have always said I have I know well I did bring my umbrella today good that's the good news the bad news is I left it in, in the my car. car. <laughs> I do that all the time. I know. I'm the same way. Okay, well, maybe we can, when we leave the office, we can find a, a trash bag or something to wrap up. I need little wipers in. now for my glasses, now that I have to wear glasses. They look very, very cute. And the on mask, you. and it's fogging up all Sorry the time. Sorry about your eye ulcer. <laughs> no, you're not.